I think that we've got more reason to improve going into this year in the short term. North Melbourne have the Clarkson factor, so I don't know what kind of North will show up. So if a good North shows up, they could easily beat us. But I'm still going to on balance tip my boys to win this game by 20 points. So, just like I predicted, North Melbourne get the chocolates over the West Coast Eagles. I did call this, guys. I was very confident North uh, were going to have what it took to get the job done. And I didn't really have any faith in the Eagles, and I ended up being proven right. Easiest tip of the round. Definitely got that tip right. And uh, I'm the smartest man alive, and I am never going to die. No, but in all seriousness, here I am uh, to eat a little bit of... um, Eat crow? Eat humble pie? One of those things. North Melbourne uh, played a fantastic game of footy and beat the West Coast Eagles by five points at Marvel Stadium, uh, which is a result that I openly you know, did not see coming. I was confident of an Eagles win, I'll be honest. Um, as you would see through my content, I've been very confident of uh, the Eagles being much improved on last year. I certainly wasn't smug, but the logic that I applied going into this game was that uh, I felt like the Eagles had more reason to be good by round one than North Melbourne. You know, considering both teams were deplorable deplorable last year and uh, all the ins coming back in for West Coast and a much better run with uh, injuries, etc. in general preseason um, fitness, I just thought there was a lot more upside in terms of being ready for round one. Um, and with North Melbourne, I wasn't really sure what to expect, to be honest. I uh, wasn't shocked to see them play well, but I bet against it. I bet against North Melbourne being able to come good in round one under Clarkson. I thought he'd need more time, um, but it was a very impressive performance. What I'll say is, as a side note before getting into um, analysing this game was that I thought we were actually treated to a fairly decent game of AFL footy. That was 17th versus 18th um, on the ladder last year and I was listening to the radio on the way to uh, watching the game at my sister's house and BT was uh, presenting on the radio and he goes, uh, Nep, we've got North Melbourne versus West Coast next, this should be an absolute cracker. And then you could hear him, <laughs> you could hear him laughing away from the microphone. I generally thought that was funny. But just as an aside, that was a pretty good game of footy considering that was the worst two teams in the comp last year. And to be honest, as a spectacle, it probably exceeded that of Carlton and Richmond. That being said, Carlton and Richmond would smack both West Coast and North. So plenty of talking points out of this game. And I guess in this video, I want to sort of break it down a little bit as someone who was uh, quite emotionally attached to the game that went ahead. And to be honest with you, I'm thinking about doing an Eagles video a week. Maybe just like an Eagles segment. Well, I'm thinking Eagles Corner. Uh, is what I might do. Um, it may not be the case every week, but maybe if I can segment it into um, to making content just about how the Eagles went that week. I think there is a little bit of an appetite for that. Um, if you're a non-Eagles fan, you might not find that interesting naturally, but there is a fairly big Eagles contingent of True Footy viewers as well. So the only premise in which I do this is based on the fact that I'm doing enough varied content about the league in general that I can have one segment dedicated to the Eagles. If I was just doing a couple of videos a week, you know, footy tipping, I wouldn't be doing Eagles reviews every week. But the, the goal is over the course of this year to try and upload as close to daily as possible. So if I'm putting out a variety of content, I can probably justify some Eagles focused stuff. So that's the goal at the moment. Before I get into um, analyzing West Coast in particular, I think the elephant in the room is that North Melbourne were pretty impressive, you'd have to say. And one thing I did feel going into this season for them was that there is no way they were as bad as last year's form indicated, much the same as was the case for us. You know, the may not be the most talented or experienced uh, best 22 when you should compare it to some other sides, but last year they were a long way off being competitive with uh, a lot of sides. Yes, they had a pretty good run to the end of the year, but I contrast it to round two when these two sides met. The Eagles had a lot of waffle top ups in that game, uh, and North Melbourne limped over the line, and I walked away from that game thinking, man, both of those teams suck. Like, North are not that much better than the side that West Coast um, fielded for that game. And now I don't feel that way. I think North Melbourne have come a long way. Perhaps it's the Clarkson factor. I'm sure it's a little bit more varied than that. But there's plenty of reason for North Melbourne to be excited for a number of reasons. And the two biggest ones, the two biggest standouts from this game, Luke Davies Uniac and Harry Sheasel. I'll talk about LDU first. And, um, you know, this guy, he, he's getting a bit of a reputation now. He's a high draft pick. Took a little bit longer to come on than, um, you know, uh, as say Andrew Brayshaw by comparison was another top pick in that draft. Uh, but he's slowly and surely become an absolute gun midfielder. And today, he was clearly the best player on the field. Um, and I think he had like 10 clearances in the end. He's credited with 32 touches. He just monstered uh, West Coast midfield. And to be honest, that's not a hard task uh, as proven over the last few years. It wasn't an Eagles midfield that should have been royally bent over as it was. But I just thought LDU, 
has really, really arrived as a player. And it's early days, but that was an all-Australian level performance from LDU. So I think from that perspective, North should be very, very excited about what he can produce going forward. And then, of course, the, the other one is the clear standout from this game was Harry Sheasel, who uh, came in and I am not surprised that he played well at all. You know, he's, he's him and Ashcroft are one and two for rising star favourites. One thing that did surprise me, I thought he'd play forward and he'd kick a couple of goals and have 15 touches. Clarkson played him behind the ball, and he's added another string to his bow. You know, he, he could win the footy as a junior in the midfield, but playing behind the footy, he just looks so composed, didn't really make mistakes, took plenty of marks. Uh, this kid, I actually think this kid could be a top five player in the comp one day. I know that's going early, but I don't say that lightly. I don't say that about, you know, that many prospects in the league. Harry Sheasel is going to be an absolute superstar. He had 34 possessions, which is outstanding. And it's been 39 years since a player had that many possessions on debut. So apparently Greg Williams did it in 1984. He had 38 on debut, which I believe is the record. Um, that was the most since then. And he was genuinely impactful. The other standout from this game was, of course, Nick Larkey kicked six goals. Um, you know, the second time in a row he's done that against us. And to be fair, that was against a much stronger and experienced West Coast than he did against last time. So hats off to him. Um, there's been a bit of criticism about Tom Barras. I, I, I don't know... It was a weird game because Tom Barras was genuinely one of the Eagles' best players and Larky still kicked six goals. There was at least a couple that weren't on Barras and a couple of, I think, free kicks that Hearn gave away. Anyway, that's not really the point. Nick Larky is a good player. So bottom line, North Melbourne have improved a heap and there's plenty of reason for them to be excited under this new era for Alistair Clarkson. And to me, I, I think you can read a little bit into round one. It's a fair bit removed from the preseason. We've seen results like um, Port Adelaide having, you know, a pretty substandard preseason performance against West Coast and North Melbourne, sorry, West Coast and Adelaide. Then they've come out and absolutely rolled Brisbane in round one. Round one can be quite indicative of how a team is going to go that year. I don't have data, but it's just a gut feel. And and based on that, I think North Melbourne are clearly not a wooden spoon side. I'm reluctant to really go too hard on a prediction of how they'll go. But bottom six, based on the form I saw, it's probably about right as opposed to, you know, bottom two or bottom... I think I had them third last in my prediction. Might have even been second last. Admittedly, you know, West Coast aren't amazing opposition, but... It was a still a much better West Coast side than, say, 12 months ago. For them to put in that performance with uh, no Ben Mackay as well um, against Allen and Darling, who you know aren't necessarily the, the best two key forwards in the game, but they're pretty damn good. They lost Cherry early in the game to, uh, I think it was an ankle injury, and uh, it kind of gave them a ruck disadvantage. They're, they're probably against the best side to have a ruck disadvantage <laughs> possible because Jamison and Williams are... Probably the weakest two ruck duo um, that I've ever seen, to be honest. Because they're young, not because they genuinely suck. They're just young. So Greenwood goes into the ruck and has a fantastic game, um, as does that Combin guy. I don't know if that's how you say his name, but he he was pretty good this game too. So bottom line, they had some adversity themselves, North Melbourne, um, and were able to you know kick six unanswered goals against us. And again, I think a lot of that comes down to us being bad, but you still have to be good enough to put us away in the way they did. And like I said, it was a much, much improved North Melbourne performance. From a West Coast perspective, yeah, that, that second quarter period, that second quarter lapse was the most frustrating part. In fact, it was infuriating uh, to see a fairly decent start squandered. You know, like not long after quarter time, I kept thinking, okay, the score's close. They've just hit the front or whatever, but I still feel like we've been better. But then, you know, what ensued was six unanswered goals where we just looked pathetic. That was the period of the game we let the game completely slide out of our grasp and it really did start to reflect 2022 and the disappointing aspect was we had some genuinely experienced veteran midfielders who supposedly have a reputation for being good players just get absolutely walked over and that was the part of the game with which I am the least satisfied with. In particular, I think the performances of Tim Kelly and Dom Sheed were a little bit embarrassing to be honest. Look, with Sheed you can probably excuse it to some extent Statistically, I think he had 25 possessions, but I do know he's just missed a year of footy, so maybe I'm being harsh, but Tim Kelly, I have been a big defender of this guy. I thought he, I was completely happy to excuse the, uh, you know, the up and down performances last year because, you know, the, he was trying to carry the team on his back sometimes, had amazing games and had other games where he looked disinterested. And to be honest, I didn't really blame him. But today, I was really disappointed with a player that has the potential to be an A-grade midfielder, or at least has that sort of reputation, and just got completely, absolutely walked all over. He did steady in the end. He kicked a goal. I think he had 25 possessions, but 
The stats don't show how badly beaten West Coast got for a large period of that game. It's not all doom and gloom, though, to be honest, from an Eagles perspective, because, like I said, North played well. It wasn't it wasn't like we just got beaten by the worst team in the league, as, as the narrative could be sort of suggested that's what happened. I mean, they were, won the wooden spoon last year, but let's call it on what we saw. North Melbourne played well. West Coast did not, but... Aside from that second quarter where we conceded six goals in a row, we were okay on either side of that. So I think it was halfway through the third, we were down by 34 points. That would double our score. We didn't really look that competitive, to be honest, but we did come home with a wet sail. We did kick seven of the last nine goals. Something clicked into gear, which was almost at the same time just as frustrating because it's like, we know you're good enough. You've now decided you want to play. Now you're on the brink of being embarrassed. You've brought out this uh, this intensity, which was good enough to win the game. But you let us get so far behind that it didn't matter in the end. In terms of analysing, you know, the way the Eagles move the ball, which I think is a is a focus for Eagles fans and general the general commentary about the Eagles is how are they going to move the footy? There was a bit of backward kicking, but I think we were improved in this area. But I think there's a deeper issue. It's not so much mindset of the players or at least not in this game, where we're too tentative to kick forward. I think I've figured out that if we're getting blitzed in the center, which we did last year and we definitely did today, what happens is that the ball finds its way into our back half automatically, and we allow sides to set up defensively, which means if we get the ball back and don't move the ball quickly immediately, North Melbourne, in this case, had the opportunity to set up all across the field, cut off all our options, and that forces us to play slow. There were a few good examples where we were sort of trapped into that position and some good ball movement allowed us to get a forward 50. That was not seen last year. I saw some improvement in that area this game. But the big elephant in the room is the fact that we lost clearances 41 to 26. And when you have a ruck advantage like we did and we won the hit outs convincingly, that is unforgivable and that is the number one priority we need to fix. And we still nearly won the game, to our credit. It wasn't a truly pathetic performance. It was a truly pathetic second quarter. And we had our moments. There was a moment where Noah Long got a little bit excited, first game nerves, had a shot on goal and, you know, literally flower bagged it to about 10 metres out. Allen's miss running into an open goal square. I thought Busher said something funny at the time. He said it was a bit cruel of Oscar Allen to do a Jack Darling impression right in front of him. Oh, that was funny. Uh, and then at the end, Gaff running into an open goal and missing. Like, there's all these little moments there where we could have won. I suppose you could say the same thing. Curtis Taylor hit the post in the dying minutes. At the end of the day, though, the better side won the game of footy. I'm just reflecting on the fact that we could have won. So after all that, wh what does this loss mean for West Coast? Uh, what, what Does it really change our opinion or the narrative around it? Uh, my hopes have been a little bit dampened, to be honest. Uh, not so much because I think I'm going to knee-jerk and think I was massively wrong just after one game. But, you know, when you're looking at a season where we're going to lose more games than we win, round one against the bottom side was one you'd probably hope we had banked for four points that we've now missed out on. Are we now a wooden spoon contender? We probably are a contender, but it's still it's a little bit early to tell because we don't know how good or bad North Melbourne are. If Clarkson has them click and they're as good as, you know, finishing 10th or 11th, then this loss doesn't look so bad in hindsight. I guess we just don't know the answer to that question yet. Ironically as well, at the end of the year, considering we are going to be around that bottom full mark, bottom six best case scenario, the fact that we lost this game, we might actually be grateful for that come draft day. I won't talk too much about that, but it's possible. Overall though, I think I'm just, you know, I'm not too concerned about wins and losses this year as much as just disappointed that the... The senior players, without the disadvantages they've had previously, were just unable to stand up to the challenge. And not all the senior players, just a select few. We did have the opportunity to blood some youth as well, which I'll talk about each in isolation. So we had three debutants. Jinbi was fantastic. He had 12 tackles, which was a game high. I think Shui had the second most with seven off the top of my head. Surprisingly, we were a good tackling team in this game. And one thing that Jinbi comes in and immediately does is he's this bullocking physical midfielder that's not afraid to tackle. And he really stood out like dog's balls in a midfield against Kelly and Sheed, who were all too happy to let someone else do the hard work. So him and Yo are the physical bullocking types, and that's what we need more of. Unfortunately, Jimby's just 18 years old and unlikely going to improve us massively in the short term. But I feel like this kid will get a Rising Star nomination probably in the first couple of months. Noah Long was good. He had a couple of, um, you know, 
brain fart moments earlier, a couple of fumbly moments, but I think he settled pretty well, actually, and his composure was pretty good. So, you know, I think Jimby and Long have a, the chance to stay in the side for the entire year. You know, f- uh, fitness permitting, they may not be able to play 22 games or 23 games in a season, but I think that is achievable for both of those guys. Chessa was a little bit disappointing on debut. He had just the five touches, but we just need to remember as well that this kid has missed so much footy. And to be honest, I'm I'm willing to give him a little bit of a free pass. He can't do that four weeks in a row, but he can probably do it this week and survive next week. I'll run through some positives and negatives from this game. Uh, Luke Shuey was best on ground for West Coast specifically by an absolute mile. And I, I think I've said this before on the channel, but I am not cool with the disrespect that he gets. I've heard people criticize his captaincy because he hasn't been on the field. Like, how is he responsible for that? And how is he responsible for poor team performance? I think this guy, more so than any other senior player other than, you know, perhaps Hearn and McGovern. There's a couple other examples there. But he really puts in the effort when it's needed. I think it was really clear today that uh, he was playing for a sense of pride to some extent. His intensity was really good. He had 27 touches and had far less time on ground than most of the other high possession winners. A whole stack of tackles. Um, Sure, he missed a couple of kicks, but he also nailed a couple of centimeter perfect passes as well, and I think we're really going to miss this guy. I've talked about Jin Bian Long. I thought they had pretty good debuts. Uh, Liam Ryan was pretty good with three goals. Took him a while to warm up, but still probably our most damaging and influential forward half player in that game. Uh, Jermaine Jones was pretty good as a small forward, and we acknowledge the fact that he was a forward. He did a year uh, as a defender last year, and he's gone back to the forward line. Um, so he's had his role disrupted, and he kicked two good crumbing goals. So... To be fair to him, he's nailed that role, uh, at least as far as this game goes. Oscar Allen was solid and and a little bit rusty, um, but I'll give him a pass mark for kicking a couple of goals. The ball movement was slightly improved, but I think there's there's a couple of other really improved points, which is worth noting. And that was the fact that we had more tackles than them, which is something that we do not pull off very much. So that's an improvement. Can you imagine if we didn't have Jinbi or Shui playing? Uh, the inside 50s, we also only lost by three when it's su- one point during the, uh, the game. I think we had like 16 not long before halftime. We got that number up to 46. So that suggested that the midfield improved and the ball movement improved. And not against great opposition, but it's still a move in the right direction. Hearn, Tom Barras and Gov, I think were all pretty gallant in defense. I think they withstood a quite a lot of North Melbourne um, forward entries. And sure, I think each and every one of them made some mistakes. I think Hearn gave away a few free kicks. Brass's man may or may not have kicked six. I'm, I'm still questioning, you know, I didn't really see them in the same shot that much. It was a weird sort of game. I don't know if that was a structural error. But either way, while they may have leaked a lot of goals, those three, I can remember being very resilient, taking a lot of contested intercept marks. So that's a plus. And the final positive is we had three debutants. So that in itself shows that we are putting some games into the youth. Now I've got less negatives dot points than I did for positives, uh, but the negatives are quite overwhelming. So uh, the biggest negative for me was the lack of competi- uh, competitiveness in the midfield. 41 to 26 clearances, despite the fact we had maybe not double, but not far off uh, in terms of a hit out advantage. So uh, a midfield in particular, Sheed and Kelly, to a lesser extent, Gaff as well. Uh, these guys were too reactive. They had too many of their hitouts sharked. And this is an ongoing problem. And now this year, there's no excuse. Um, maybe Sheed, you could excuse a little bit. But either way, it wasn't pretty viewing. As a negative, I put defensive structure. So I highlighted the three defenders as having good games in isolation. But the amount of times North Melbourne would get a goal, particularly in that second quarter, where there would be about four ruse surrounding one Eagles defender. And some of those examples, it wasn't even, you know, a fast counterattack that burned us. Like, I just wondered how they got so free. So I think structurally, it was a bit of a bizarre game from our defense. The massive period of lack of effort, I've talked about that, but that is a massive fat negative. Xavier O'Neill, I don't know if this is a role thing or not, but he had six possessions and I think he's capable of a lot more. But I'd be very interested to see if he's actually getting center bounce attendances or do they just stick him on a forward flank and expect the midfielder to perform well there and keep his spot? I don't know, but it wasn't a great game from him. But um, I'll wait until I find out more about where he actually played. Missed opportunities in front of goal were frustrating. But again, I'm not going to sit here and say we should have won the game because we definitely got beaten. In summary, great North Melbourne performance. They should be excited. Some really good individual performances. A lot of talent there. And uh, even just having watched one game, I now have a lot of faith that Clarkson is going to produce something with this side, um, which is a nice change for him.
By comparison, pretty disappointed with um, some individual efforts from the Eagles. And again, just the massive second quarter fade out. But it is only round one. I'm not going to lose my shit too much. It was just a frustrating game. And the fact that it was close meant there was tension, you know, even though I, I don't really care that much about losing four points, but I really wanted to win when it was close and we had a chance. And yeah, it was a bit disappointing, but we'll see what happens in round two. We've got GWS. At the moment, I won't be tipping us. Um, it's up to the Eagles to re-earn my confidence. I've, I've lost it a little bit, but we're, we're a red hot chance. Well, I don't even know what to expect from GWS. They play tomorrow. So um, I'll decide by the time my tipping video comes out. But thank you for watching this, guys, uh, particularly if you're not an Eagles fan. Um, and uh, let me know what your thoughts are on, on a weekly Eagles video. It may not be that every single week I have something interesting, interesting to say, you know. Um, but I will do Eagles videos as they come up because I feel like it's something that comes easily to me. And hopefully it's half decent content for you. So let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.